Morning, would you please stand and worship with us? There is a Power. 
Welcome to church this morning. We're so glad that you're here. If you could take 30 seconds to greet someone that you haven't seen before, uh, slap a neck, you know, shake a leg. It's all the same.
turn your heads to the screens real quick. We just want to show you a quick video. Welcome to One Church. Our church is all about people becoming disciples of Jesus. What does that look like? We connect, we grow, and we make a difference. A special welcome to all guests. Whether it's your first time, second time, or maybe you haven't been here in a while, we are so glad you're here. In the seat back pocket in front of you, you'll find a card labeled, So You're New Here. This will provide a few details to make your visit the best it can be. Also in the seat back pocket, you'll find the connect card. If you're here for the first time, fill that out and let us know you're here. Bring it to the hub in the back, and we got some special info and a gift for you there. If you're here for the second time, we would love to know you're back. Fill out your connect card. Bring it to the hub. We've got a special gift for you as well. A $10 gift card of your choice. Whether you're a guest or a regular, the connect card is a way to sign up for things. Information about the church, ministry or events, as well as opportunities to volunteer and serve. You can also request prayer or let us know of a decision that you're making today to follow Jesus. After filling out the Connect card, you can place it in the offering or drop it by the hub on your way out. We are so glad you're here. Hey, good morning, One Church. So good to see you guys. Yay, it's second service. We had a great first service. We're going to have an amazing second service. For those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Shelly Traub, married to Pastor Tracy, and this is Grady, our youth director. Yes? Mm -hmm. It's springtime, Gray. Are you loving the spring? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, you get, you get allergies and stuff. Yeah. I never had allergies as a kid. And until this morning, yeah. right? And until this morning, you discovered you had allergies, <laughs> right? Okay. Well, hey, next week, um, after second service at our house, we're having a connect lunch. So that's for people who maybe would like to get to know me and Pastor Tracy a little bit more, a little bit more about what's going on at One Church, what's the vision that that God put on our heart when we planted this church five years ago. And so we would just like to invite you, if you have not joined us yet for lunch at our house, next week, Sunday, right after this service, we'll just be heading down the road about seven minutes, and we'd love for you to join us for lunch. If you've already come to a, a Connect Lunch at our home, Next week is also the Grow Dinner at 4.30 at the Bethel Campus on Scenic. And Pastor Tracy and I will be there. That's the next step of kind of learning about what happens at one church. So the Grow Dinner is next week at 4.30 and the Connect Lunch. So you can have basically lunch and dinner on us next week. Right? Right. That makes Grady excited. Hey, yes. Free food's the best food. All right? <laughs> Go ahead, Gray. Hey, all you. A, we have a... Three key places where you can find out what's going on here at One Church. One of them is in the bulletin, which you should have gotten right when you got here. The other one's online or on Facebook. And our last one is on our app. Um, on our app, right when you right when you download it, it'll give you a give you a screen where it has all of our campuses. Pick the Riverbank campus because it'll tell you everything that's coming up and um, it'll tell us some more. It's like your homepage, right? Yeah. That'll be your homepage on the app, right? Okay, so a couple quick reminders. Uh, Family Fun Day is coming up on the 5th of May. It'll be our fifth anniversary, our birthday as a church plant. We're so excited about it. So there's sign-ups in the back of the room for sides and salads. We're going to have games and fun and music, and we're just going to have a good old-fashioned five-year-old birthday party. So join us, and you can get more information back at the Hub and sign up there, okay? I, I wish I was five again. I wouldn't have to pay any bills. <laughs> Hey, June, June 25th, speaking of that, right, June 25th through the 29th, uh, we're having, <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to be doing kids camp, sorry. <laughs> the, uh, the cost, I believe, is uh, $275 for the early bird registration. They're going to be doing it up in Tuolumne, California. Um, along with kids camp, we're also going to be doing a youth camp. Our, our youth camp is $175 for early registration. We'll have registration out next week for that. Um, and it's, it's going to be July 15th to the 18th. Uh, so our leaders for, for Kids Camp, if you, if you haven't connected yet with Miss Danielle right there, Danielle, raise your hand. You can connect with her and let her know that your kids are coming to camp. You guys going to camp down here? Yeah? You guys want to go to camp? Yeah, make sure you tell your parents and talk to Miss Danielle. It's a lot of fun. All right? And then Grady's your point person to talk to for registration uh, for Kids Camp. And with that, I'm going to throw us to youth a quick, camp. I, I mean, a youth, yeah, youth. You're yeah, not young. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I could do kids, but 
No. I'd be one of the kids. Yes. Here we go. Let's watch this video on the Global Leadership Summit. One of the greatest joys I've experienced in recent years is seeing the impact that the summit has had on people in the marketplace. You will certainly learn practical skills that you can immediately apply in your business. But more importantly, I believe God is going to show you how he can use you to advance his purposes right where you are. I warmly invite you to join thousands of other marketplace leaders just like you at this year's Global Summit. So for the second year, we are going to be hosting the Global Leadership Simulcast. And this year, we're going to be holding it at the Gallo. Uh, this is not just a leadership summit focused on church leadership. This is a broad-based leadership summit. So I'm going to attend. If you're in a leadership role, whether you're entering or a longtime leader or a middle manager, this is for you. And I would encourage you to also bring people from your workplace. Uh, you know, Jesus, he's the best trainer, even in the workplace, right? He said it He said it first on how to set up models for leadership. So put that on your calendar. We'll be having more information on that is coming up in August. Uh, at this time, I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward. We're going to prepare to take the tithe and the offering this morning. Um, let's just go ahead and pray. Father, I am so thankful and so grateful, God, for your plan for us and for us as individuals, for our families, Lord, for our church and for our communities. Father, I am grateful for the people that have come alongside five years ago to start something that you birthed in, in the heart of the leaders of one church and you birthed in Pastor Tracy, God, to, to build a a church for the community right here in this specific location, God. And I'm grateful, Lord, for all those who, who hear your voice and who desire to be obedient to you. And in that, they give faithfully, Lord, in accordance to what you have in your plan for them and for your body. So, Father, this morning, I just pray a blessing over all those who give, Lord, that you would increase their households, Lord, not, not just financially, Lord, but that there would be spiritual growth in their house, Lord, that there would be growth and health to their families, Lord, to their, to their grandchildren, Lord, and to their plans. And, and may they plan, their plans be the desire of you, um, uh, your plans, Lord, as we line up with you, God. So please bless the offering and the tithe this morning, Lord, that it would go out into the world. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So this morning, uh, while we're receiving the tithe and the offering, we have a win that we'd like to share with you. And saying so we're going to go ahead and invite two students yeah. up to the stage, right? So we're going to yeah. invite Elizabeth up and Maka. Where's Maka? Do you have your art? Did you come on up and bring your art? <laughs> I love. This is my grandson. He's so responsive to me. Come on up, honey. Okay. So these are two of our three kids that um, attended Fine Arts last week we, or two weeks ago, and we highlighted them last week, you can, right here, okay? And we're going to talk about you first, okay? Okay? <laughs> this was Ian's fir first, <laughs> first, uh, first trip to, to the Fine Arts Festival. You can take the microphone, okay? And, and he uh, entered a division around um, in art, written two-dimensional. I think it was called two-dimensional, right? The two-dimensional category. And so his art's going to be on display for the next couple weeks at the front of the church. Uh, but I asked him today just to kind of tell us a little bit about the significance of his art and the message that he was sending through his piece. What's the symbolism of your art? Okay. Um, so the glasses in his eyes are cities, which are mistakes that he's looking back to. And the ocean behind him is where he can get baptized. And then how the ocean leads to land where he could start new, his new path. Very cool. And, and what did you use to, oh. to what medium? Or what do you call that, a medium? Well, you, I just used, like, things I found in my house, like pencil, Sharpies, and colored pencils. That works. Way to be resourceful, honey. Good job. <laughs> So 
He did very well for his first attempt. He got a rating of excellent, and so we are very, very proud of him. And then we're, is Randy here? No? He's, okay, so Randy next, in two weeks, will be bringing his short sermon that he also entered. So make sure that you're here for that. Now I'm going to let you do the last introduction. Um, so Elizabeth sang, uh, did a vocal solo last week at Fine Arts, and uh, she got something called a, she, she got qualified to go to nationals. Uh, she got a superior with invitational. Um, and so we're going to be heading to Texas at the end of July so that she could perform, and it's going to be really good. We're excited. Uh, we're proud of you, and we're proud of everybody else. Maka and Rand, I don't know where Randy's at. He's not in here, but um, oh, he went home. But, <laughs> but no, we're we're proud of all you guys, and we're a church that believes in raising up our next generation. And so, with that, Pastor Tracy wanted to honor all of you guys by letting you also perform here as well, and so that we could all honor you as a as a church and then as a family. So, um, so if we could all stand, uh, so as we go back into this time of worship. It's, it's so cool being at a church where the heart of the church is, is youth. Uh, you know, we, we really believe in that. We want to invest in that. Not just in youth, but in also in kids as well. Um, you guys are so important to the next generation. And without you guys, man, nothing would be possible. Um, but as we go back into this time of worship, man, I'm excited. I'm excited to hear Elizabeth. I'm excited to hear the worship team and Pastor Tracy's message because it was so good. Um, so let's pray. Jesus, thank you for this day. God, I pray that um, as we go back into this time of worship, that your presence is here. God, that you that you speak to our hearts, that you speak to our minds, and that whatever you have for us, God, we take it in. We love you. We honor you. Thank you for letting us worship you in a free place. Amen. the name above every other name Jesus the only one who could ever say worthy of every breath we could ever be we live for you oh we live for you the name above every other
when God shows what he deposits into the next generation. I'm so proud of Elizabeth and Ian and, and Randy for like taking their gifts and putting it on display. Right? Right? Because that's what the Lord wants us to do. Take our gifts, use them, and put them on display and others would see that he is good. So can we just pray for Elizabeth and we'll just you just be proxy for all your generation today. Okay? Father, I just thank you so much, God, that you are a good, good God and that age is of no limit to you. That you will use every age, the youngest age, and, and we can respect that, God, that you are a mighty God and you put talents and gifts in each one. Father, I thank you so much for the talents and gifts that you have put in the kids and in the youth in this room, God. I thank you, Lord, for, for Elizabeth and for Randy, Lord God, and Ian, Lord God, as you have called them, Lord, to, to use their gifts, to demonstrate your goodness in their lives by what you have given them. And Father, I just pray a blessing over Elizabeth specifically this morning, God, as she has an awesome opportunity to go to nationals and, and show her gift for you, God. And so, Father, I just pray a covering over her, a protection over her gift, God that she will use it always first for you, God. And I thank you, Lord, that she is able to lead us in worship this morning. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Good job. Wow. So with that, we are going to go back into a time of worship. I love what the Lord is doing in our generations. We give you praise this morning, God. Receive our worship this morning unto you. For you alone are worthy, and you are so good. I love how you love us, Lord. Amen. Amen. The atmosphere is changing. Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord is here. The atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord. Evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord is here. Overflow in this place, fill our hearts with your love, your love surrounds us. You're the reason we came. To encounter your love, your love surrounds us. The atmosphere is changing now. The spirit of the Lord. Evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord is here. Yeah. The atmosphere is changing now. For the Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all. Spirit of the Lord is here. Overflow in this place. Fill our hearts with your love. Your love surrounds us. You're the reason we came to encounter your love. 
hearts with your love, your love surrounds us. You're the reason we came to encounter your love, your love surrounds us. Oh, you surround us, Lord. Oh, come fill this place. Come fill this place. Spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around that the Spirit of the Lord is here. Is here. The atmosphere is changing now. That the Spirit of is all around. The Spirit of the Lord is presence have tasted and seen of 
the sweetest of love when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come flood this place and fill the
sometimes just the the ability to slow down and rest in his presence with his truth. This morning, maybe you you come in this morning and maybe life isn't all that you thought it was going to be. And you just needed to be reminded that God is with you. He's present. He knows exactly where you're at. He knows the situation better than you do. And he would just say to you this morning, I'm here. And when he shows up, the atmosphere changes. The atmosphere within us and the atmosphere around us changes. It's why we are so desperate for his presence. So desperate for him to be in us. Lord, we thank you today. And Lord, I pray that you would encourage those that needed to be encouraged today that you're here and you know exactly where they're at. And so, Lord, I just pray that your presence would surround them, your love would surround them. Lord, that you would change the atmosphere around them. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You can be seated this morning. Wow, what a great time of worship. Elizabeth did so good, girl. So proud of you. I met Elizabeth about three years ago. She was probably the most talkative 10-year-old I've ever met. Um, she, we went to lunch with her and her Aunt Sheila, and uh, she drilled me with all kinds of questions. It was awesome, but just so proud of you. And uh, I know I said this in the first service, you've sang in a lot of talent shows and some competitions, and, um, but today was like the first day like you led the body of Christ in worship. And I love that. And I love that so much. Um, we had the kids in here because we want them to see that this is their church. This is their time as well as ours. And so thank you. Uh, looking forward to a couple weeks having Randy uh, preach his short sermon. Um, it's going to be a great time. Well, we're in, yes, you, I'm getting interrupted. Okay. Right on. Oh, I'm coming over what? You would like to pledge $100 towards her trip to Houston. All right, so we got $100 here. Do I got another $100? <laughs> Can I give? You got another $100 here. We got another. We're up to 300 I need another. No. Hey, right, if you want to be a part of Elizabeth's journey to the National Fine Arts in Houston, Texas, that's great. So we got $300 right there to start helping. So we're going to make sure it happens. So that's awesome. That's awesome. I'm excited. Um, I won't get to go, but that's all right. Um, it's okay. I'll be, where we'll, oh, we'll be traveling back from Hawaii, so you can have Texas in August. <laughs> I'll take Hawaii in August. <laughs> it's a no-brainer there for me. All right. Well, we're in week two of our new series that we started, uh, Spirituality for the Rest of Us, when there isn't a one-size-fits-all to following Jesus. So um, last week, was uh, we started this series. It was great. We were diving into kind of breaking the chains of religion and discovering what it truly means. A lot of times we say it, oh, I, it's not religion, it's a relationship. But uh, we really needed to understand that. So we, we got into that last week. Um, one of those main thoughts we, we talked about is that there, is, there, there isn't this idea of a one-size-fits-all. So getting to know Jesus for you may look different than getting to know Jesus for me, and that's okay, and that's okay. And so uh, last week, our, our big idea of our sermon was in this idea of a relationship and this walk with Jesus that God is more concerned with the fruit we make than the route we take. And so often, we can get caught up in the route instead of what God is doing in our lives to produce fruit. So to this, today we're starting week two. Um, we're going to be talking about how does spiritual growth happen. Hear about it a lot in church, talk about it a lot in church. Um, but I thought today would be a great day to talk about how does spiritual growth happen. And so I, I brought some props and different things. So how many of you are hikers? Who's a hiker? Raise your hand if you're a hiker. 
Mike's a hiker. All right, hiker. How many are wannabe hikers? You want to hike? You're a wannabe. Yeah, you join me. That's good, right? You think about hiking. You've even looked up trails to go hiking. You've watched YouTube videos on how to hike. You even went out and bought a camel pack, you know, so you could have water. And you use it just to walk around the house because you can get tired, a little winded, right? But, uh, you know, most of us are probably not hikers. I've did a little bit of hiking in, in my day. And um, when, it, when it comes to our, our spiritual growth, um, a lot of times in church, uh, they, they teach this, this path to authentic spiritual growth um, is linear. It's a linear path, which it, it's really not a linear path. So what I explain that and give you an illustration of that, it's basically somebody comes to Jesus and they're right here. They come to Jesus, they meet Jesus, and then we put them on this linear path. That means you got to go one, two, three, four, do these six steps, and you have arrived at spiritual maturity and growth. And, and sometimes it's kind of like standing in front of a mountain that you're going to hike, and the, the, you're going up there, and you get to the base of that mountain right here, and the guy says, okay, here's how we're going to do it. We're going to go straight to the top. So we just go straight up, you get to this level, get to this level, you get to this level, you get to this level, now you've arrived. Well, if you know anything about hiking, for me, about this level, I'm needing oxygen. (laughs) About this level, I need a paramedic. And about this level, me and Jesus are meeting personally (laughs) face-to-face, right? It's just, it seems impossible, but we do that in church. We do that in a relationship with Jesus. Somebody comes to know Jesus, and we say, all right, you know Jesus. Now, here, you got to get to here. Let's go. And, and, and they, you know, they get, they get through that first class, first step, and they're checking out. Why? Because a, a relationship with Jesus, spiritual growth in Jesus, is really not a, a, a linear path. It's more of a meandering path. It's more of this. You get to know Jesus here, and you start this journey. You come over here, you come back around, you get back there, and you you grow a little bit there. You come here, and you grow a little bit more. You keep wandering. You keep meandering, right? And if you know anything about hiking, that's a lot. That's the way you hike. My kids, when they were little, or my boys, my oldest boys, when they were about seven and eight, we would go on this hike. For the Royal Rangers, which is like Boy Scouts uh, for Christian boys without all the politics. And the girls weren't allowed to join. Um, but um, <laughs> sorry, that was so wrong. Sorry to the Boy Scouts and the girls of America. Um, but we'd go on this hike at Arreo Seco over there uh, by Salinas. And we'd go up there. And the first year we went on this hike, it was exciting. I had my seven year old, my eight year old son. We we're going to go hike. And, um, you know, I hadn't been hiking in, like, ever. So um, we were really ready for it, um, prepared and everything. And so we start, we get to the base of this mountain, and, and we begin to go up this mountain, and there's these paths, and they call them switchbacks. And these switchbacks. And we started walking up this mountain, and we go up this hill, and what would happen is we would... We had come to a point in the trail where there was a tree or there was a a boulder or there was something there that made us turn. And we had to turn and kind of go back the other direction. But as we were going up this path, we gradually were making our way up this mountain. And, And thank God it was not a linear path that I had to go straight through and because I ended up carrying my boys half of the route. Um, along with their backpack and my backpack, you know, and lunch and everything was in it. And, you know, if you're like me, you pack a big lunch, man. And, you know, no. and so um, and, and it was just, you know, it was incredible. We went on this hike and we'd get up into this, uh, we climb the mountain and we'd drop over into this meadow, beautiful place. We'd have a great time eating lunch there. We'd drop down a little further and there was this big creek that we'd go swimming in and there was a waterfall. It was awesome. And then we get done there, and they take us out this direction, and it's like this road, this gravel road that leads us right out to our cars. And I'm sitting there going, hey, I'm no genius, but this would have been a lot easier (laughs) 
we would have came this way, just got to the water, had some fun, had lunch, and gone back. You know, uh, but uh, so the next year I was like trying to work. They wouldn't let me, though. But uh, I was like, man, it's uh, I'll meet y'all there. You know, Um, but the the, the idea is this, that on our spiritual journey, it's kind of like that switchback, those paths. You know, you're, you're traveling along in your relationship with Jesus, and all of a sudden, something happens. There's a, maybe it's a, a crisis. Maybe it's a, a change in life, a transition in life that makes you make a little turn, an adjustment, and you just kind of start heading back the other way on your journey. And maybe you get over here, and something happens in life. Maybe it's, you know, maybe it's marriage. You're, get, you're getting married, and now you're thinking, man, I should run back down the hill. No, but here, no, I'm just kidding. You're getting married, and so that changes life, and so you change your little direction, right? You get over here, and you have kids, and you wonder, what in the heck am I doing? And that kind of changes the direction of your journey with Jesus. It impacts that journey. It's a meandering path. So uh, when it comes to this the spiritual growth, um, there, there is an authentic spiritual growth, and it is a meandering path, and it's okay. It's okay. So if for years you've been in church and you felt like, man, I'm just never going to measure up because I can't do all that, this, then, and that, I want to release you from that pressure. I want to tell you that your path, your, your understanding who God is or who Jesus is may look different than mine, and that's okay. It's a meandering path, and, and it's a, all right. We're all going to experience those different things. So today I want to tell you this. This is my bi- the big idea today is this. Spiritual growth is a journey to travel, not a destination to arrive at. Spiritual growth is a journey to travel, not a destination to arrive at. Now, the Apostle Paul, uh, he completely understood this truth about spiritual growth. The Apostle Paul, as we know, if you've heard anything about the Apostle Paul, he was raised in the most religious sect there was. I mean, he knew the law inside and out. He knew the customs inside and out. He knew when to sit, clap his hands, raise his hands, you know, bow his head. He knew everything. I mean, this guy was raised in it. And he's on his journey. This is, that's his journey to God. Right, and so he's meandering along his journey, and along that journey, he's taking you know Christians out, you know, and all of a sudden, God says, "I'm going to change your path," and he throws a, a bright light in his way on the road to Damascus, and he knocks him off his donkey, and, and and Paul has an experience with Jesus that transforms his life, so his path, his trajectory that he was on, has now changed. And it begins to change. And then we also know Paul wrote most of the New Testament that we have today. And and so this is a guy, this is not some, you know, he wasn't some guy that didn't have an idea what was going on. This is a guy that really understood things. And he understood that spiritual growth is a journey to travel, not a destination to arrive at. Philippians chapter 3, 12 through 13 says this. I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection. This is Paul. He says, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. You see, Paul understood it was not a destination to arrive at. It was a journey to be traveled. You know, this is a guy that really you could say he was at the spiritual peak of his growth. But yet he realized he hadn't arrived yet. He was aware of this journey, this idea. And and it has moments of great growth. Right? If you've walked with Jesus and you've been a follower of Jesus, you, you've experienced some times where, man, it's just like, oh, I'm, always, I'm growing, I'm learning. It just seems like this, every message that Pastor Tracy preaches is just like speaking to me. And I'm just, you know, and that should, it should, because they're pretty amazing. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but, uh, you know, and you're growing. And then there's other times that the growth seems to have slowed down. Or sometimes we think it has stopped. And we get, we get worried, right? 
walking that trail, going up that trail, there was times that I had to really slow down, especially when I was carrying one of my boys. It was like I couldn't go at the pace I was going, but I was still on the journey. So if it seems like, wow, I haven't experienced much spiritual growth, let me tell you, it's okay. It's okay. Don't panic. Don't panic. Jesus is still with you on the journey. Still with you on the journey. And that's okay. Paul also tells us, he gives us a simple picture of what spirit, this, this journey, this spiritual growth journey should look like as a follower of Jesus. And, and it's just real, I like this because it just kind of simplifies this whole mystical idea of spiritual growth for me. He says this in chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. He says, and so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you, give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. And then here he gives us some really great things right here. If we're going to grow spiritually, listen to this. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. You see, what he's saying here, the simple keys to spiritual growth on this journey is this. Don't, you want to grow spiritually? Don't do the things that conform us to the patterns of this world. Don't do the things that conform you to the pattern of this world. Don't fall back into the old habits. Don't chase after the pleasures of life because that's what this world says will get you happiness or, or bring you to this place. Um, don't chase after uh, uh, the prestige and the pride uh, of life. Don't, don't you want to grow spiritually, don't conform to those things. If you want to grow spiritually, you need to do the things that transform us. We need to do the things that transform us into becoming more like Jesus. We need to do those things that deepen our relationship with him. Because the deeper and the closer we are, the more we'll know his heart, his love, his wisdom, his will for our lives. And so throughout the Bible, we see people on this journey, this meandering path journey. People that are doing their best to be transformed, to become like Jesus. And, and throughout the Bible, we see that as these people are growing, we see these things we call in church spiritual disciplines. Spiritual disciplines. And these are things, you know, when we talk about do the things that transform us, these are some of those things that people do to make them, to, to transform and to be more like Jesus and to know Jesus better and to draw closer to him. Um, and and there, were, there were all kinds of spiritual disciplines. Uh, Jesus had spiritual disciplines in his life. Um, he, that, that allowed him to grow closer to his heavenly father, right? We saw him often go off to a solitary place to pray, right, and go away and just spend time with the father in prayer. We saw him in the temples reading the scriptures. Like, they didn't have Bibles like we have. They didn't have, you know, Bible apps and iPads and all that stuff, but they had these scrolls that were in different temples that they could go and read the scriptures, um, and then we saw Jesus, he also had a spiritual discipline of fasting when he was in the wilderness. He fasted, and, and, and that was some of the disciplines he showed. Now, again, you don't got to be a Christian for very long um, before you, you notice how everybody seems to have their favorite recipe for spiritual growth and their, their, their spiritual disciplines. Like everybody kind of gets into their, their, their groove, and um, you know, why? Because it's made a really big difference. It's made a profound difference in their life. And so they want to encourage, and if you're around them long enough, they want to encourage you to do it. They want you to try it. Why? Because it works so well for them. And the problem is that sometimes we can take something that works so well for us and we can make it sound like a non-negotiable for everybody else. This is the way I grow. You got to grow this way. Otherwise, you're not growing. You know, and, and, and that's... That's not the, the meandering path. That's trying to make a one-size-fits-all 
uh, relationship with Jesus. You know, those who love deep studies of the books of the Bible, like, man, they love to get in a book of the Bible, and they take, you know, Leviticus, and they break it down by every word, and they look up the Greek, the Hebrew, and the Urban Dictionary, and all that, and I'm just kidding, not, it's not in the Urban Dictionary, that's a uh, you know, but they 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 just want to tear it apart, and they look at the his, and and that's great, that is awesome. And they say, you know, they'll tell you you got to love to do deep books of the Bible. That's the way you're going to grow spiritually. And you're like, yes. And you get through one verse, and you are like, no, this doesn't work for me. This is not happening, you know, all right? Or you, somebody, they're an early riser, and they just believe that you got to get up before the crack of dawn, before the roosters crow, and you need to spend an hour in a prayer closet weeping and gnashing of, I mean, praying, praying before God, and, and that is the way to spiritual growth. Or you got those, they love to journal. They're journalers. And they love to write everything down. They got 26 journals from the last year, you know, and they just got them full of everything they ever did, ate, breathed, drank. You know, it's like, they're just, and they're just like, journaling is so important. You need to write down every thought and everything. And that is the way to spiritual growth. You're like, Man, I have a hard time spelling my own name. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all, right, all right. I'm not going to write out my whole life. Um, and who would want to look at that later? Man, that's depressing, right? Um, but this is the deal. You know what? They're right, sort of. It may be for them this way they grow spiritually. It may be their meandering path. But maybe for me or maybe for you, that's not the way you're wired, and that's not the way you're going to grow. Now, in your notes or in your bulletin, there's a list of, of spiritual disciplines, um, and, and ignore the spiritual gifts. These are not gifts. These are disciplines, um, but, um, th and there's a lot of different disciplines there, and I guess, you know, here's the thing. Not all of them, not all of them work for all of us. Like, I was looking at that chastity one. That does not work for me. I'm married. Thank God. God didn't call me to that one, right? Um, but there's all kinds of, there's, there's just a lot. And we put those in there because man, maybe you don't know, maybe you haven't experienced any, and you want to check some out. But we're not saying that you got to do all those to, to grow, right? Because spiritual growth is a journey to travel, not a destination to arrive at. So how does life transform, transforming spiritual growth happen? I just want to kind of break that down uh, as we, we end today, is this. First of all, we use spiritual disciplines, all those things, we use spiritual disciplines as tools, not rules. Use spiritual disciplines as tools, not rules. You see, the Bible doesn't present all these spiritual disciplines as rules to be followed. It presents them as tools to help us to know and grow in our relationship with God with Jesus, and, and, and almost all of those on the list have legitimate biblical support. Uh, most of them, you know, you see they are modeled throughout scriptures, whether it's in the, the Psalms, some of the heroes of our faith, um, in the early church when they got together, some of the disciplines that they partook in. Um, but let me see, if I look at that list, there's, there's only a few that really rise to the top or to the level of what I would say are more biblical commands. Remember last week we talked about um, there's house rules, right, that everybody in the house has to follow, um, and yet everybody in the house has different personalities, so they relate and connect to those rules a little differently. So it's the same thing. This is kind of, you know, as I look at these big, these three the, the big three, they're kind of like the house rules of, of spiritual disciplines that, that will help us um, and help us grow in our relationship. The first one is this, authentic community with other believers. Don't give up meeting together. Now, Hebrews 10, verses 24 through 24, or 25, 24 through 25, pastors, we love this verse. 
we love to guilt you into coming to church with this verse, right? It's like we want, you know, we want to put the guilt trip on you. So, you know, the Bible says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together. So be here on Sunday. Both services, just to make it look better. I mean, you know, um, be here, you know, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. The truth about that is, you know, when this was written, they didn't have churches like we have churches. They, the, the only thing that would come close to that was the temple or the synagogue, which really didn't have anything to do with Jesus, you know? Um, and, and so what he's writing to, he's talking to people that are meeting in homes. They're having little, little groups, house churches. And that's what he's saying. Don't neglect meeting together. As some people do. He's, so, so one of the spiritual disciplines that we need is we have to be connected as the body of Christ to a small group of believers that we can do life with. We, call, we have life groups. We also have ministry teams that connect and they do life together, all right? But we believe that is a spiritual discipline. It, it's, it's not, hey, if you don't join a, a small group, you're, it's not a question of whether you're going to heaven or hell. It, it may be a question of whether I like you or not, but no, I'm just kidding. Um, no, but it, it, it's probably, it, it's, it, it's really a question of your growth and where you're connected because listen, you know, a foot is just a foot. If a foot is disconnected to the body, what happens? Just chop a foot off, leave it laying there. It's going to decay. It's going to grow. It's going to stink. It's going to be worthless. Uh, a hand, same. A eye, see, the, we're the body of Christ. We need each other. So we need that authentic community with other believers, right? Not just the surface. We walk into church and say, oh, how you doing? Fine. How you doing? Fine. How's it going? Fine. Do you know Jesus? Fine. <laughs> Can I have a million dollars? Fine. Right? That's our standard. That's our Christianese answer. Um, you know, we need to be in a group where we can get together and they say, how's it going? Well, hey, it's not going great. I wanted to shoot two of my kids. They're just, I, I duct taped them twice this week. I Benadryled them. Um, you know, <laughs> It's been a rough week. Can you pray for me? All right? We need that authentic community. The, the second big one of the big three is prayer. Pray in the Spirit on all occasions. Ephesians chapter 6, Paul tells us, he's given us the list of the armor of God and that we're supposed to be ready for battle and we're supposed to be ready for life. And he says, pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all the believers. It doesn't say pray in the spirit between 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. because that is the spiritual time to pray and you will just really experience God at that moment in time. You know, uh, it doesn't say that you got to pray four times a day in a certain spot in a certain closet, right? You lock me in a prayer closet and we're going to have problems in about 15 minutes. I'm going to be clawing my way through some sheetrock and coming after you, because that just, it for me, that doesn't work. Now you, I, I pray constantly. I pray constantly. I have to. I work for you guys. I have to pray. I work, you know, I'm praying constantly. I pray, I'm praying while I'm preaching, right? My, my spirit is praying constantly. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. And, and so that's, it, it's a key part. Because why? It's our communication with God. It's, it's our listening and hearing from God. It's our telling God, hey, this is where I'm at. The third big one, I believe, is this, reading God's word. It's powerful for transformation. Second, Second Timothy says this, three, chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is inspired by God and useful to teach us what is true, to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong, and it teaches us to do what is right. I believe that the word of God is powerful, and it changes a life. But you notice, you know, it's not saying, you know, it only changes your life if you read through the Bible in a year. 
If you don't get through in a year, you wasted your time. No, it doesn't say that. It doesn't say, oh, if you're going to read the Bible, you got to break it down by each Greek letter of the alphabet. No, it's, it's useful. It needs to be a tool in our lives for transformation. So community, prayer, God's word, those are some of the big threes. Those are some of the boundaries as we're spiritually wanting to grow that we can walk in. Um, now, some of the others are there, but they're not rules. They're just tools. Rules must be obeyed at all the times everyone, by everyone. Tools are different. They're specific for a task. So some of you are wondering, why is there a chainsaw up here? I'm going to answer that for you. It's a tool, right? This is a great tool. This is a really good chainsaw. Uh, I bought it at Home Depot, so if I get any credit from Home Depot for advertising for you. Um, all right. But this is a great tool. It's a great tool to go out and cut down a tree or cut up a branch. It's an awesome tool. I love it. But this is not a great tool if I'm going to build custom cabinets. Unless you are really good with a chainsaw. You are going to destroy those custom cabinets. It, it's, it's an incredible tool. It's powerful, man. You, you, you spark this thing up, and, man, it just cuts through things. I was going to do the keyboard, but they told me we still need that for in the service. But, um, you know, it, it is a great tool, and it's useful, and it's amazing. But if it's used wrong, it's worthless. It's going to bring destruction. You see, the value is not in the 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 tool just for the tool's sake. The value's in the tool for what it can do. And so the same thing with spiritual disciplines in our lives. They are tools for us to use, but the value is not in the tool. The value is in what it can do and produce in our lives. If we place all the value in the tool, we're, we're going to miss out. And so we need to understand as we look at those lists of spiritual disciplines, um, you know, you may look at those and go, hey, which one of those might help me grow closer to God? Which one of those might be a tool that would work for me where I'm at? You know, maybe you're, you're, you're in the, the, the rough stages of your walk with God and you're just trying to cut out trees. Maybe, you know, you need a chainsaw tool. <laughs> Uh, maybe you've grown and you're, you're developing and you're learning about your gifts and your talents and your skills and you're like building the cabinet and you need to change the tools up. You need to use the right tools. Which one of these will help me grow? You see, I, I know there's certain tools in my life that work much better than others. And I'm aware of those. Like I said, you lock me in a prayer closet, I'm going to go crazy. I went to a prayer summit a few years ago with some of our pastors and all the pastors from this area, and we were in this small building up at this campgrounds in the Santa Cruz Mountains, and we have these services, and then they would go into these extended prayer times, and like 20 minutes in, I'm like going stir crazy. I'm like going, I got to get out of here, and, and you know, about 20 minutes in, some of them, they're just getting started. Why? Because it was a great tool for them, but for me, I'm like, man, if I want to pray, and I'm in this beautiful Santa Cruz Mountains. I did not want to be in this little room with 40 pastors. I'm like, I'm, I'm like sliding. I'm like working my way to the door. Bless you, bless you, bless you. And I'm outside, and me and God have our time. And I go and I go pray. Why? Because that wasn't going to work for me. It's not a tool that's going to work for me. You know, put some worship music on. Let me walk around, and, and me and God are going to have some great conversations. I'm going to hear from him, and, and he's just going to speak into my life, and, and I'm going to grow. You see, it, it just doesn't work. But see, here's the importance of the prayer tool or the solitude tool. It's a very important tool, not because of the tool, because of what is being said to us. The importance is listening and talking to God, but not the path you take to get there, right? The scriptures, we read the scriptures, uh, so, so why? So we can obey the scriptures. The scriptures in themselves, th that is not the value. The value, the importance of the scriptures is that we reflect on them and we apply them to our lives and we work them out. So how we do that may look different from one person to the next. 
you know, journaling, the, the importance isn't journaling or writing things down. The importance of journaling would be the obedience to follow what God is speaking to you. If you look back in your journals and you go, oh, well, I didn't do that and I didn't do that, then what point is journaling? Right? It, it is, it's about the fruit that is produced in our life. And depending on what we need to accomplish or build into my life, I will look through my spiritual toolbox and pick out just the right one for the task. And if we can kind of get rid of this myth that the, the, the spiritual discipline are mandatory rules, then it's going to free us up to pick up the tools that w- will help us grow and strengthen our walk with God. Here's the other thing about tools. This is a great tool for cutting down trees, and this is a studly tool. I mean, I look bad just carrying this tool, all right? But if I give this tool, if I give this tool to my five-year-old grandson, Kalei, and I say, Kalei, this is a great tool for cutting down trees. I want you to take this out, and I got six trees back there you need to cut down. Here you go. What's going to happen? Probably not going to be able to get it started. But if he does get it started, danger, right? He can't, he's not ready to use this tool. He's not, so, so when it comes to spiritual disciplines and some of those tools that we have, sometimes as mature Christians, we want to take this chainsaw and we want to put it in the hands of a brand new baby Christian, new believer, and say, here you go. And they're like tearing things up. They're destroying things. They're cutting their arms off. They're, you know, they, they, their spiritual walk is a mess because we handed them a tool that they weren't ready to use. And so that, that's this, this idea that it's not a linear, it's not a one, two, three, four, five, you've reached Jesus. It, it's a meandering path that we walk on. The second thing in this idea uh, is... Um, the, well, first of all, the value is not in the spiritual discipline. The value is in the fruit that they produce. Um, and here's the idea. How many of you have lawns? You got grass, right? How do you know if your grass is healthy? It's green. If it's green and it's clean, it's good, right? And, and, and so you don't do anything to it. You don't go messing with the time clock. You don't start doing things to it. You keep doing what you've been doing. You don't change things up. If you know the grass, what, how do you know if it's bad? It's brown, yellow, weeds are popping up. There's a problem, right? Then you go to the toolbox and you start figuring out what's going on. Is my irrigation shut off or something wrong? Is there a broken, clogged up sprinkler so it's not getting water? Um, do I need to put some weed and feed? Now, but I'll, here's the thing about weed and feed. You got to know the right weed and feed to put on because there's a, there's a winterizer weed and feed that if you put on in the spring, you, you can destroy your grass. And then there's a spring weed and feed. So you need to understand the, the season that you're in and, and where you're at. Again, it's, the, it, it's not so much in how you do it. It's not in the irrigation system. It's not in the sprinklers. It, it, you're, the health of it is in the green grass in what is produced by those things. So let's not get caught up in spiritual tools as rules. The second thing in the spiritual growth is finding the recipe that works best. Find the recipe that works best. You see, appropriate balance in life can be defined by a, cannot be defined by a schedule or a checklist. It's defined by that recipe that works best where we're pursuing whatever God has called us to and we're, we're, we're developing and growing in healthy relationship. You see, it's impossible to balance life. It's impossible. Somehow in a day, you're supposed to give equal time to work and play, to family, career, spouse, and kids, to diet and exercise. Um, then you got the spiritual disciplines. You've got to give equal time for prayer, study, service, solitude, hanging with non-Christians, mentoring younger Christians, evangelism, discipleship, social justice, biblical reflection, and chastity. I just wanted to see if you were awake. That, it's not going to work. It's impossible. It's impossible. You're going to go crazy. How many remember our first series that we did this year? Small things, big difference. What was my word? Anybody remember my word? Pizza. <laughs> Balance. Balance. And so as I'm going through this series, God has put me in check. He begins to walk. The, I'm on this meandering journey. And I'm like, man, I'm trying to find balance. And I'm re- going through this series and I'm like, wait a minute. 
wait a minute. Nowhere in the Bible does it tell us to have balance. And so God started to work on me, and he began to change how I'm looking at it. And it's not so much balance as it is uh, seasons and the balance in the season that I'm walking in. You see, there's a season of prep, planting, plowing, planting. Uh, there's a season of feeding, rain, fertilizer, weeding, growth. There's a season of harvest, fruit, um, reaping, production, profit. There's a season of rest where it's dormant, it's quiet, it's rejuvenating. Why? Ecclesiastes 3 says, for everything there is a season, a time for every activity under the sun. You see, there's different times and seasons that we're going to walk through in our marriage with our kids and with our finances and in our spiritual life. And, and that's just the ebbs and flows of life. There are seasons of crisis. There's seasons of transition. There's seasons of celebration. There's seasons of joy. Um, there, there, there's just season of busy times. There's seasons of down times. What is important is that we never become so out of balance that we're going to fall over or we get stuck in a season. Because if we get stuck in a season, we're going to miss out on the next season God has for us. I mean, Moses, man, Moses was at the top of his game, right? Moses had it all going on. I mean, he led the people out of Egypt, out of slavery. He was in the wilderness. God was doing miracles. He would get alone with God. He would do his spiritual discipline, go to the mountain, spend time with God. He had everything going on. And one day his father-in-law came in and he said, hey, Moses, you're messing up. Hey, Moses, you're, 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 you're out of balance. You are like whacked out of balance, man. You got the whole nation of Israel coming to you for answers, you are the only one that is setting over them and judging things. And, and he said, you can't do this. This is going to lead to your death. You're out of balance. you you got to change this season. And he gave him some instruction. Here, here's the thing. The, the fact is, if I'm so into what I'm doing in this season, or I, I can let things around me fall apart. If I'm so into what this season is, uh, and I can get stuck in it and out of balance, that, that I'm going to be in trouble. The exact same in our spiritual disciplines. What I did in one season to grow in my walk with God may not work in the next season. I may need to look for a different tool. I may need to look for a different practice to strengthen my relationship and grow in my relationship. So this morning I'm going to end with these three questions as Andrew comes back. These three questions, when it comes to our spiritual growth journey. These are three questions that I believe we need to continually ask ourselves. The first is, what season is this? What season am I in? What has God asked me to do, me or my family to do, or put on the front burner during this season? It's okay if we get a little out of balance. It's a season. We just need to make sure it doesn't become unhealthy and harmful, right? We live, in an, we live in the valley that is like one of the most incredible agricultural places in the world. My son, he works, he, he, he's a supervisor for orchards and vineyards, and he understands their seasons. And some of the seasons are crazy. Like right now, he's in a crazy season. End of February, beginning of March, all the way through October, is a crazy season for him. He's up early. He's working a lot of hours. They can call him in the middle of the night because they do vineyards. And if the, the winery says that the grape sugar content is exactly right, they have to get those grapes off those vines within the next hour. And so he can get a call in the middle of the night and have his crew out there getting these grapes and harvesting. And it's crazy. He looks forward. He can't wait for November to hit. Because November and December and January is their down times. But come into February, it's prep. It's getting things ready for the harvest. Come the summer, it's time to harvest. So it, it, it is, but if we, we get, if we're not aware of the season we're in, we can miss out. If we're not aware of the season we're in, we could try to harvest when it's not harvest time. And if a farmer tries to harvest something out of season, he's not going to get many much results from it. So that's why we need to be aware of what season we're in. 
Is this a season to plow? Is this a season of rest? Give the ground a rest and rest that you know that God's with you. The second question we need to ask is, so understand, what is the season I'm in? And then the second question is, what does Jesus want me to do today? What does Jesus want me to do today? If you start out with that question, you might not be balanced, but you will be fruitful in what God has called you to do in this season. What does God want me to do today? And then the third question is this. Is there anything so out of balance in my life that it's harmful, that it's hurting my relationships or my walk with God? I think if we ask those three questions on a regular basis, we might not be perfectly in balance, but we will be in the kind of balance God calls us to have in our walk with him as we journey this path with him and we grow in our relationship with him. Remember, spiritual growth is a journey to travel, not a destination to arrive at. Would you stand with me this morning? As you look at those three questions, here's the thing. The best way to answer them is to be completely honest when you look in the mirror. Be honest with yourself. What season are you in? Second thing is, you need somebody that's close to you, that knows you, that you trust, that can help you as you walk through those questions to give you some feedback. To help you understand, maybe you don't, you're so busy in the season you're in, you don't even recognize what season it is. And you need somebody on that that's close to you to say, hey, this is what I see. And you need to act on it. But here's, here's, the, here's the, the, the bottom line today, too. This, this idea of spiritual growth starts all at the same place for every one of us. It all starts at the cross of Jesus. So this morning, maybe you're here and you've walked in and man, the season of life, you don't even know. It just seems like you are in a constant hurricane season. You just, you go from one hurricane to the next. You get thrown from one to the next. And you're like, I, I, don't, I, I don't even understand that I'm on any kind of path. But today, I, I want to tell you that there is a path. It may look different than mine, but it's a path that God planned for you long ago. That he established for you long ago. And it starts with him. And that's the beginning point. That's that starting point. It may look different. But that's where we all start. So with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, Today, you realize, man, my life has been like a hurricane, one to the next. I just don't seem to get out of this season. But today, you can change that. You can start a new season, a new path in your life. And that's by inviting Jesus into your life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. What that means is that he came so that you can have a new life. He came so that you could have a new path. He gave his life so you can start new. And today, you want to start your journey with Jesus by inviting him into your life. And you just raise your hand if that's you this morning. I want to pray with you before we go. All right. The other thing this morning is maybe you're here and you've been stuck in a season. Maybe you've been in a dormant season way too long and you've been lying, not doing anything, not, and God's calling you, no, it's time to come out of the dormant season. Springtime's here. It's time to start tilling up the ground in your life, in your spiritual walk. It's time to start discovering some tools that I have for you. It's time to prepare because I'm sending a harvest your way. But you got to be prepared. You got to get ready for it. Maybe that's you this morning. You say, yes, this morning, I believe God is taking me to a new season. And he's calling me to a new season today. And you would raise your hand so that I can pray with you that God's calling you to a new season. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Right on. Thank you. Lord, I thank you today that, Lord, uh, you don't leave us. 
in a season. You don't leave us stuck in a season, but Lord, you call us to new seasons. So Lord, those that raised their hand this morning, that Lord, they realize that you're, you're taking them to a new season in their lives. Lord, I just pray that Lord, you would make it clear what that season is. Lord, that they would understand the season and they would understand what you're asking them to do. Lord, just thank you for it. Thank you that we can walk in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember, your spiritual journey is one to travel. It's not a destination to arrive at. God bless you. So before we leave today, I'm going to ask Dane and Jenny if you'd come down here and just be available for prayer. Uh, if you know that the Lord was speaking to you this morning, or maybe you're unsure and you just need someone to pray with you or just to be in agreement with you or pray over you, and you responded today uh, to Pastor Tracy's invitation, Dane and Jenny and myself will be down here to pray. And don't forget, tonight there's youth. And if you were one of the people that also joined me in sponsoring Elizabeth to help her get all the way to Houston in August, please stop by the hub and give them your information, and, and they can tell you how we can do that. And we might have to pray for Dane as he falls and hurts himself up here. We also pray for healing at this church. We love you all. Please come up here for prayer if you need it, all right? We love you.